Welcome back to Minimalism and More. Thank you for watching. Today I'm going to show you around my minimalist bedroom. The most obvious thing you probably noticed is that my bedroom doesn't have a bed. This video will be an in-depth review on my experience of floor sleeping, which I've been doing for the past eight months. I hope to raise some points for you to consider if you're debating doing so yourself. Prior to floor sleeping, I had a double divan based bed and I was dying to get rid of it. When my daughter Jasmine said her mattress was getting uncomfortable and that she would like a larger bed, I seized the opportunity and my bed was in her room within the hour. For the first few nights whilst I considered my options, I slept on top of a sleeping bag with a quilt and pillows. Although this would have been the most minimal setup, it didn't tick all of my requirements. I wanted to find a sleeping solution that would be as close to actual floor sleeping as possible, whilst considering comfort warmth, cost, hygiene, convenience, and aesthetics. I found this temporary setup surprisingly comfortable-ish. It was cost effective as I already had all the items and I could clean the sleeping bag, quilt cover, and pillowcase easily. However, I didn't find it warm enough and it was a pain to tidy away every morning and unsightly if I didn't. After some consideration, I settled on a mattress topper. I purchased a 5cm thick gel infused hydro foam one in a hypoallergenic and breathable bamboo cover. I then placed the mattress topper on top of a woven plastic indoor outdoor rug. So, did it work? Comfort. Comfort is such a big category that I've had to divide it into two subcategories comfort for myself and comfort for others. Comfort for myself. I find this really comfortable, surprisingly so. When I go on holidays now, I can't wait to get back home to my floor mattress. I sleep better on it than in any bed I've ever had and it's done wonders for my previous bad back. For reference, I sleep on my back and my side and I favour a firmer mattress. I have no mobility problems, so getting up and down off the floor isn't an issue for me, but I understand some people would struggle, so floor sleeping would not be a viable option for them because of this. Although it's comfortable to sleep on, I don't find it comfortable to lounge about on for indefinite periods of time. When I had a traditional bed, I'd waste away days in it, watching TV and eating snacks. I'll leave it to you to decide if not doing that anymore is a pro or a con, as I'm in two minds. The other comfort issue that I wanted to address is what it was like floor sleeping when I had a sickness bug. Luckily, this has only happened once in the last eight months. It did put more strain on my stomach getting up off the floor initially when I woke up, but as I stayed in the bathroom until the sickness feeling had passed, I wasn't repeatedly getting up and down straining it. When I went back to bed, I removed the large cushion off the back of my sofa and I propped that against my wall and I slept half sitting up for the remainder of the evening. If I had a larger sofa, I would have just laid on that instead. Comfort for others. My daughter loves sleeping on mine with me and I hate sharing it. So I bought a second one two weeks after mine arrived for her. She loves to bring it into my room to be with me and her friends love it when they come for a sleepover. One thing I didn't fully consider, which has been a big thumbs down for me, is I now don't have a bed to offer guests when they want to stay over. I regularly have friends visit me for a few days and I would normally make up my room for them and I would share with Jasmine. For the past eight months, however, I have given them Jasmine's bed and she's bunked in with me. It works, but it's not ideal. I am happily single and have been for a long time, so I didn't have to consider anyone's needs and wishes other than my own when giving up my bed, but maybe you do. I don't plan on dating in the near future, but if a miracle happens and I meet someone, maybe I'll just send them a link of this video so that they know what to expect in advance. 
warmth. Back in the summer when I first started having this as my bed, I found it lovely and warm. But then winter kicked in. I don't know if it's because we had a particularly cold winter here in the UK last year, or if it's because my room has so little in it to retain heat, but I found it a lot colder than normal. Climate is definitely something I'd urge you to consider. Cost. My double mattress topper cost me £126. Although not a small amount, I found this to be much more cost effective than buying a new bed or a new mattress. The mat I think I paid about £20 for. Hygiene. I was really worried about the possibility of mould growth, but I've had this sleeping setup for a full summer, autumn and a winter season here in the UK and I've never spotted even one bit of mould and I check it thoroughly every single week on laundry day. I think my morning routine helps to prevent any mould issues. Every day when I get up, I take the quilt and the pillows off the mattress topper and open up my window to let some fresh air circulate whilst I make myself a cup of tea. And every week when I change the bedding, I flip the mattress over to the other side. One thing I don't like about this setup is that my quilt touches my carpet. I feel like this is unhygienic even though I hoover daily. If I had a larger rug, this would resolve this, but I struggle to find a bigger one in this style. Convenience. I find this setup super convenient and I love how easy it is to clean. No more struggling to move my bed frame, to hoover underneath it or to dust the skirt and boards behind it. I'm able to fold it up small and use it as seating and I've gained so much extra floor space in my bedroom. It is also convenient in that I can switch rooms easily. My previous downstairs neighbours were so noisy some nights I just couldn't sleep in my bedroom. So I picked up my bed, moved it into my spare room and I was asleep within minutes. That's something I couldn't do before when I had my traditional bed frame. This would be really convenient for someone who relocates often. It could easily fit in a standard size car. Aesthetically pleasing. I personally love how this looks. I feel calm and relaxed in my room and I find it very peaceful. Not everyone else feels the same though. I've had pitying looks from my letting agent. Trade men ask me if I've just moved in or am I moving out. Friends and family joke that it looks like I've been robbed and Jasmine's friend even asked me if I'm too poor to buy a bed. I try and live my life authentically and to not let other people's comments and opinions upset me or alter how I want to live my life. My worry was never about myself on this issue, but about Jasmine. What if she got bullied because of it? We spoke about it beforehand and she assured me she wouldn't take any mean comments to heart and she understood my reasons for wanting to try it. She has a lovely set of friends though, so luckily it hasn't been an issue. One of the biggest plus points in getting rid of my bed is the knock-on effect it's had for other items. If I don't have a bed, I don't need my bedside tables. And if I don't have my bedside tables, I don't need my lamps. I've been able to rid my bedroom of all bulky furniture and items and it's much more minimal now, which was my aim. With every positive though, there seems to also be a negative to counteract it. Without any other furniture in the room, there's nothing to absorb the sound and it reverberates and makes it seem louder than what it is. I live in a flat, so noise has been a big issue. The final verdict. I have loved floor sleeping and I'm so glad I tried it and I would urge anyone who's debating it to at least give it a go. Going forward, however, I have decided to tweak my sleeping setup slightly. I'm going to stay sleeping on a mattress topper, but instead of laying it on the floor, I'm going to have a low platform bed with a tatami mat base. I know it's not as minimal as what I've grown used to, and I lose some of the benefits that I've mentioned, but because of the type of property I live in, and the fact that I'm likely to be here for a number of years, I've decided to prioritise warmth, noise level, and hygiene. If my circumstances changed in the future and I needed to relocate often or I was short on floor space, I would definitely do it again, 100%. I can't see me ever going back to a normal mattress. This one is just too comfy and my back is so much better for it. I will not be adding back in any of the other types of furniture that I removed either. Please like this video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful. And let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do another bedroom tour once I've set up my new bed and whether you want me to keep you updated on how I get on with it. Please remember to subscribe if you do so you don't miss out. Until next time, take care.